Welcome to the Movies to Watch Before You Die podcast. I am your host, Dylan, along with my cousin and co-host, Gab. And today we are talking about a movie that I have nominated as one to watch before you die, the inspirational 1993 classic, Rudy. We'll see if Gab thinks it's a classic. Gab, uh, you you had said you saw this movie before, but a long time ago and you really remember it, right? So here's the thing, and I'm interested to know how many other people had this experience. Rudy was a movie that they put on in elementary school on on three different occasions and and every year right one if you were on a coach bus going on a field trip remember they had the little tvs and you could put on a movie okay for me that's like the wedding singer is that movie that's like random movie they throw on on coach bus really that feels inappropriate for elementary school maybe it was like middle school by that point but yeah yeah okay but rudy definitely b it, when i was really little and you can tell like how long ago this was based on you know sociological changes during lunch that was that was a stretch during lunch we were allowed to go outside that would never happen anymore because somebody could get shot but back in the day we could go outside and um, if it was raining and we weren't able to go outside during lunch they'd put on rudy in the cafeteria and then lastly is uh if it was like right before a vac- like a holiday like a vacation or something and they were like i should put on rudy they made us watch rudy all the time um but i didn't really remember any of it outside of like the basic plot and watching it as an adult felt very different also my dad references this movie a lot like if you're ever going through something my dad is like they told rudy he was too small <laughs> It's, it's like, a movie. Okay. This is a movie your parents reference all the time. If you are in our age demographic, like let's say you're like mid twenties to mid thirties, your your parents love this movie. And yeah. my mom always says, you know, I, I hate to do it, but I always have to do her voice. She's like, there are six moments in that movie that'll make you cry. Six. And like she'll start naming off moments in that movie. And I was like counting it as I was doing. It. I was like, yeah, I could find a way to cry at a lot of this. Like <laughs> it is, it is one of those movies that is so heaped in cheese that you will either be along for the ride or you will hate it. So I'm excited to see how you felt about it. Yeah, um, I'm excited to share. God, why don't you tell me what is Rudy about? What's this all been about? What am I working toward? You think you know everything about me, don't you? I die that you're bottom. I bloody well ought to. Well, Dill, succinctly, Rudy is about a young man who... Uh, Whose, whose dream in life is to play football for Notre Dame uh, and his path to finally achieving that goal. Okay, that more succinct than IMDb. IMDb says, Rudy has always been told that he was too small to play college football, but he is determined to overcome the odds and fulfill his dream of playing for Notre Dame. Notre or Notre? <laughs> it's definitely not Notre Dame. Like I feel Notre like you Dame. hear people say Notre Dame, and I'm like, yeah. how many beers deep are you? <laughs> yeah. Although Which, in 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 French it would be Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Yeah, um, Notre Dame. I do feel like Notre Dame, by the time this movie came out, was still more at the height of college teams people cared about. I don't know if Notre Dame's still a huge deal anymore, but people still know like the Fighting Irish and all that. I find it so interesting that people give a fuck about college football, because I'll tell you what, the older I get, the more I'm like, this is like watching Little League. You know what I mean? Like these are young children playing. And I understand that some of them could go on to be in the NFL, but not a lot of them. Most of the NFL people that get drafted don't even go to college, right? They get drafted out of high school now. No, no. Maybe in basketball, like a once. Baseball. Well, no, not even in basketball. That used to be, but you have to play year of college now. But I... I love football as you're well aware. I don't even watch college football because to me, it is like a lesser product because there are guys like Rudy who it's like, this guy's never going to touch a football field again. Like why, why right. do I care about seeing him versus the guy who's going to go number one overall in the league next year? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, hundred percent. Yeah. I'm not a college football guy, but it obviously it makes more sense that somebody can walk. Like if I compare this to invincible with Mark Wahlberg, trying to get on the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm like, people don't walk onto pro football teams. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, um, okay. So you're trying to distract me. You want to hear some taglines? Oh, fine. How cheesy are these going to be? Oh, they're a little cheesy. There's a little bit. Okay. When people say dreams don't come true, tell them about Rudy. It's a bit much. Sometimes a winner is a dreamer who just won't quit. I like that better. I like that better. And this third one, 
I liked the quote and I thought it was something that like I thought this was a quote in the movie. And then after rewatching the movie, I'm like, they don't say this in the movie. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. You know, I don't think that's meant to be said by somebody from Long Island. The dog. <laughs> it's not the size of the it's dog. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog, Dylan. I'm taking the dog, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's a very, like, this is as underdog as underdog movies get. And I feel like it's the epitome of that for people. Yeah. Um, But that's an opinion. Should we talk about more what the movie's about or should we just hop straight into the opinion? I mean, I'd li- I like to give a little bit of context. It always bums me out when I listen back to our episodes and we don't describe what happens in the movie to someone who maybe hasn't seen it. So if okay. you could, I'm going to give you three minutes on the clock. Just give me a rundown. Okay. And I did watch it, by the way, just to be like abundantly clear. <laughs> Rudy, Rudy is undersized. He's, you know, probably just like- he's malnourished. <laughs> He's like my he's short. He's like five yeah. six or five seven. You know, he's very skinny, and he dreams of playing college football for Notre Dame, which is one of the best college football programs in the country. And everyone around him, his father, his brothers, are telling him, "You'll never make it. You're going to work in the whatever plant it is with us." Which, to be fair, it seems like a good union job because they're all like everybody has a house. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a yeah. long gone by type of thing. But whatever. Yeah. Um, also, we need to mention that his grades aren't good, so he can't even get into Notre Dame af- um, um, academically. Yes, he's not. Get- he doesn't have it athletically or academically. Um, so once he graduates high school, it's sort of assumed for Rudy by everyone around him that that will be the end of it. Uh, the only person who still believes him is his friend. His friend sadly passes away. He decides right in that moment. You know what? If I'm going to pursue my dream, I got to do it now. He goes straight to Notre Dame and he says, I want to be in this school. And they're like, no, but the best we can do is you can go to the local community college. If you get good grades, maybe you'll get in. He tries, he fails, he tries, he fails, he tries, he fails. And then he gets to Notre Dame and you're like, he's made it. And then they're like, what are you doing here? What do you want? And he walks on the football team and he's basically told, we're going to beat the shit out of you for every day until you quit. You're not going to ever see the field. You're not going to officially be part of the team. You just get to practice with us. And then he basically has to battle and practice. He has to make other people look bad with how hard he's going to try. And in the final game of the year, he, uh, as a senior, he's told by the coach, I'll put you in for the game. Then that coach gets fired. Of course, the new coach is like, I don't know you. I'm not, I don't, I don't give a shit about you. Um, and the team helps him earn his way onto the field by saying they want Rudy to play. Rudy gets in for the very end of the last game of the senior year. And not only does he get in on a play, he sacks the quarterback and he's carried off the field. That is the spoiler filled version of, I just did this in like two minutes. That was impressive. I also think we have to note that, that at the end, they say he's the only player that's ever been carried off the field. Yes. I'll I'll save it for the facts, but that is no longer true. There's been one other player carried off as well. Oh, good. Since. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I nailed all the major beats there, right? Yeah, I say we get right into opinion time. Let's do it. In this critic's opinion, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Well, I have a right to my opinion, and my opinion is you have no right to your opinion. This is one of those movies that you watch it and you're like, if Rudy can do all that, I can make it through what I'm going through. And that sounds so stupid, but there are so many quotes in this movie that are like, you have to believe in yourself in some way. And I had mentioned at the beginning of my description, Pete, who is his best friend, who is one of the few people who believes in him. And quite frankly, find yourself a friend, find yourself a partner like Pete, because Pete is the fucking man. Pete on Rudy's 22nd birthday gets for him a Notre Dame jacket that he can wear. And it's such, again, it's one of these movies that you're either going to say, oh my God, this is so stupid. Or you just go along with it because Rudy puts it on and says, how do I look? And Pete has two lines in that scene that like, stay with me. One is him going, you were born to wear that jacket. And it's just said with the utmost sincerity, like everything in this movie, there's not an ounce of self-awareness of like, this is ridiculous. It is all 1000% sincere because he says that. And then he has a line where he says, my old man used to always say, having dreams is what makes life tolerable. And fuck if that shit ain't true. Pardon my French. Notre Dame. (laughs) (laughs) um but right away i feel like it really grabs you in with that thought process of 
you have to try. And the only thing you're going to regret is if you didn't try. Um, I just also think that Sean Astin, two things put this movie on their back. Sean Astin puts this movie on his back with, again, unbelievable sincerity. Like, I think he's great in it. I don't know if you'll agree or not. And the other thing is, I think the music in this movie is so phenomenal. Like, I watched the movie a week ago, and then I told you, I was like, we're doing this movie, and the music has been in my head ever since. And there, there's like a slow version of the score, and like the faster he's practicing with the squad version, and both are beautiful. You know what I mean? And I looked up who did the music. It's somebody we've talked about before who I'll talk about in the facts, but I just think that this does everything right. And normally when you think of sports movies, I think of... uh Boxing and baseball, because it's much more focused on the individual. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to have a movie like, I don't know why this is the first one that comes to my mind, The Rookie with Dennis Quaid, where it's just about mm -hmm. that one player, because baseball, you're sort of isolated. Yeah. Same thing, obviously, boxing is you in the ring facing an opponent. It's very individual. And I think this movie does a really good job of making a team sport boil down to just an individual thing. You know what I mean? Because we yeah. don't care at all, even by the time you get to the final game, about what happens to the team. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what Notre Dame's record is. I don't know if they're going to the college football playoffs. I don't care. I just want to know, does this one tiny bastard get on the field or not? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And I am just so locked into it the entire time. That's my that's my opening statement there, Gab. What's okay. uh, What's some opinions you got? So obviously I know, I knew going in that this was a movie about somebody who was essentially too small to play, who winds up playing. I couldn't remember exactly how it happened, but as the movie is unfolding, I get this really uncomfortable feeling. And this is a feeling that I've experienced many times in my life, not necessarily because, uh, not in like a personal way but just in a way that like I've I don't know I'll explain in a second um and that was the feeling that we were watching somebody that was getting things because people like really felt sorry for him and that's not to say that Rudy didn't work because obviously he had to get the grades to get into Notre Dame but once he got in his like being on the football team was purely a result of people just like he just wore everybody down and they were finally like let the fucking kid play he's just so small and pathetic this his tiny little universe revolves only around this the rest of us are regular people with other things in our lives we could just give him this and i i felt very uncomfortable in the same way that i would feel uncomfortable like buying VIP passes to meet the band after the concert where it's like, I just look like such a fucking pathetic loser who would do anything just to meet you and talk to you and have you acknowledge me. And I just felt like the message was if you're pathetic enough, people will give you what you want because they feel sorry for you. It's not like he worked really hard and became a really good football player. And I understand he sacks the quarterback. That feels a little bit heavy handed to me because I think in reality, no, he doesn't. But like- May I interject? He, yes. That happened in reality. Okay, great. But I feel like then we need to see him in the movie, like practicing getting better at football. I would have loved to have seen him in the weight room getting really, really strong. Like I just felt like- this kid, like he was literally just pestering them and pestering them and pestering them. And then at the end, he goes out, he doesn't have his name on his jersey, right? Yeah. He's just wearing a random number. So like, it's not like we're making him, you know how like sometimes they're like, we're making you an honorary player on this team for the day you sign a contract, like for the day so that yeah. you can say you play. Like they didn't do any of that. I don't know. It just but they felt did. like- The fact that he was suited up and on the field means that he was on the depth chart for that game. And that means he was officially a part of the team. That's right, why right, it was right. so important to him that he dresses. And I think, I, I feel like there's a misinterpretation here. It's not about, did he suddenly become a great athlete? Did he suddenly become stronger? It is about the determination that he was there every single day. And obviously he is practicing every day to get stronger, to be better. And they say to everyone, if, if Rudy had any of the natural talent that anybody else has, he'd be the best player on the team because it's about the heart. It's about 
It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size right. of the fight I understand of the dog, that. you know? And I'm just saying, watching I do this think movie. They're not just giving it to him because of like, it'll shut him up. Let's give it to him. In fact, they try and tell him like, dude, just quit. You are so annoying. Like he's kind of like, you know, as the little brother, I'll say he's kind of like the annoying little brother who just wants to hang around and be like, come on, come on guys. Let me hang out with you. Come on. Right. But at a certain point they realize he is pushing them in the sense that he makes them have to up their effort. Like at a, Every, the coaches point and say, why don't you try like Rudy does? And the best example is like Vince Vaughn, who in, in one of like his first roles ever is in this movie. And he has that moment where he's like, he's this scholarship athlete who is supposed to be great. And he's like, well, why are you even trying? You suck. Get out of my face. And by the end of the movie, he's like, he understands that he didn't give the effort to live up to the talent he had. Whereas Rudy is given effort to surpass the lack of talent that he does have. Right, but my point, Dylan, is that I don't think we ever see that. Like, yes, we see, I mean, I I don't know. Maybe I just don't understand the, the football reference with the sacking the quarterback or whatever. But there was nothing to me that was like, wow, this kid really fucking worked his ass off to become an incredible football player. It was Did like- Did you miss like the four montages of him practicing nonstop? I, uh, no, I, I just felt like he was showing up to the practice, but not- like there was no like, wow, Rudy's really improving. Like, oh my he's god, he's showing you up know? more than everyone though, and he's getting up and wants to do it again when nobody else wants to do it again. And that's why the coaches are like, "You want to get slammed again? Sure, go right ahead." You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and that's why, you know, if at the end of the movie he starts at quarterback, I'd be like, "Yeah, that's stupid. It doesn't make sense to have this terrible player do that." But I think the the whole point isn't that he improved as a player so that he could be the best player on the team. It's that he did enough that he had earned the spot and he had earned one play on that field. You know what I mean? To be able yeah. to say he played for Notre Dame. And it just so happens that in the three plays he's actually on the field, he manages to do something statistically relevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel a little bit like maybe this is just my toxic trait, but I, I'm so allergic to like the sympathy vote that I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be Rudy. But I'd be like sympathy. It feels like, like they don't feel bad well, for him. He's not players, like, it's not like a make a wish like, that they're letting him do it. <laughs> That's what it felt like. But they were like, we're not going to play if Rudy can't play. And I was like, these fucking guys are not going to throw away their final game because of this kid. They don't care about him that much, right? Like they can't like. Well, you got to think about the fact they say that 60 players dress for the team. Now you have like 22, maybe 24 starters. If you think about special teams. So what they're really saying is if, you know, if you were the last guy on that team, who's got a scholarship to Notre Dame and you've been the 60th guy on the team every day who doesn't actually play, wouldn't you say, you know what? This guy has earned the spot over me. He's tried harder than me every day. Let's let him play one game. Let's let him be on the field for one day. Cause the whole point he, is he's, he has given enough. And that's what the, the previous coach era Parsegian says to him. He's like, you've earned it. You know, yeah. he tells him that. And then the new coach comes in who doesn't know this guy from anybody else. And is like, why do they like the, the pipsqueak so much? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I get it. I, I really do. It just, it, something about it felt like, it felt like a make a wish thing. I don't know. And I, it was also a little bit like, okay, so this guy, he had it. We forgot to mention that he had a long-term girlfriend that he ditches and then she ends up fucking his brother, which is a little fucked up and also like not cool for which her. Which is also apparently true, I think, from what Yikes. I saw. That's um, crazy. But it does seem like even that relationship, none of it was what he really wanted. You yeah. know what I mean? It was like, it, it was a version of a life that he was willing to accept because it was, you know, it was stable. It was what his father wanted for him. It was what his brother wanted for him. It was what everybody thought that he should do, really. Yeah. And I think that's the whole point is that he has to object to the allure of the comfortable to do something very uncomfortable, which is to go try and get into the school, even though you're not that smart, even though you're not that athletic and to just try every day your hardest. Yeah. Do you think, forget for a moment how much you love this movie. Do you think that it was a good choice for him to essentially throw his life away to play one game for this football team and then now have to basically go back home and say, Oh yeah, I played one game. Like, doesn't that feel like maybe it wasn't the best move? 
knowing everything I know, I think it was a very good move. But if if I didn't have hindsight, I, I think I would say no. But then again, it's not like he won't be able to go back to his job at the factory. You know what I mean? If he really, if things really fall apart, if he never gets into Notre Dame, I don't think that they're going to be like, no, you can't come back. Yeah, I hear that. I... That's the whole point of, even if he had failed, the point was that he wanted to try. And he was never going to become a great athlete who goes to the NFL. But the whole point was, he to have I done all I can? You know what I mean? I think he says that twice in the movie, both times about his grades. He says to them, have I done all that I can do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which that would be I... a better tagline. Have you done all you can or something like that? Yeah. yeah. I get it. I feel like in my perfect universe, there would have been a few other things done to make me feel like he did all he can. And it wasn't a like a sympathy, wear him down, make a wish foundation situation. See, here's the problem, Gab. You and Corey, you're too strong. You work out too much. <laughs> you, you want Rudy to somehow have like well, gotten ripped in the midst of this movie. No, and... <laughs> no, 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 no. But that's a really good point, though, Dill, because I actually said this out loud when we were watching it. I wouldn't, so the, the CrossFit team that we're on is called HWPO, hard work pays off. And Corey and I are pretty good athletes, but we're not, we're not professional athletes and, and likely we're never going to be, and that's okay. But I wouldn't want to be like the fucking scale division athlete that works so hard that one day they finally let her go out on the, on the floor at the CrossFit games to do one workout. It's like, I wouldn't want that. Like, I'd rather just be where I am and, and build relationships with people. Like if I were Rudy, I'd have been like, I want to be the fucking, I want to, I want to be one of the coaches. I don't know shit. I can't play, but I'm smarter about this game. And I know the game better than anybody else. So I'm going to be the best damn coach of Notre Dame. There's a, I wouldn't want to be like the fucking pathetic loser that they let on the field. I don't know. I just like, I get what you're saying. I think like in real life, the path is easier to say, I want to be a coach. Like I will develop my knowledge and do that. And like, if the real story, because this is based on a true story, if the real story had ended with Rudy became a famous coach for Notre Dame, I'd be like, that makes sense. That checks out. Um, Yeah. I get that it's based on a true story. I'm just saying as a piece of cinematography, I wasn't, I didn't end, I didn't leave feeling inspired. I left feeling like, God, I hope I never have to be Rudy. You say that, like, I I get it to the extent that it's also, it's about your passion and something you love. Like, if you told me that I could be on the New England Patriots sideline for a game, you know, that I could do that, I'd be like, oh my God, of course. You yeah, know but would I mean? you throw your fucking life away to try? Like, I, would I you would want not. them to feel like this kid is just so, like, it's it's like, like... I just feel, I don't know. It's like when they let one of the little kids be like the honorary uh, paleontologist at the Natural History Museum for a day because the fucking kid can't, all he does is care about dinosaurs. It's like, oh my God, and all right, fine. I guess, I just feel like you're misinterpreting pity for like them feeling as though he deserves it. And I do think there's a major difference there. It's not a giveaway. It's he has earned it. He spent, you know, two years getting the shit beat out of him every day for that university. You know what I mean? So he wants, he spent, you know, how many years getting there, but he, he just wants to be on the sidelines so that he can say he played for the team so that his family can see him on the field, you know? Yeah. And there are plenty of guys, there's practice squad players in the NFL who never see the field, but you can say I was paid by the NFL. I played for the NFL. Same thing for a college player. You can, you know, he can say, Hey, I was on the practice team the entire time, but if people never see you, they just don't believe you. Like his brother is there as this symbol of you can't do it. And his brother's like, well, I don't see you. We watch the games every weekend and you're not there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. But then to me, it feels like a little, like, let's talk a little bit about his relationship with the men in his family. You know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know. I know. I do think obviously his brother is supposed to be, you know, more of a symbol than he is even like his actual brother, just of the people who told him no. His father, I think, is very interesting because there's a scene I didn't remember where his father talks about Rudy's grandfather, who was like, uh, you know, helped them immigrate and, 
you know, his father convinced him that he should be like a dairy farmer or something like that. And it was the depression. It worked out terribly. And when he tells that story about why he convinced his grandfather to go for a dream and the dream failed, it makes total sense for why everyone around him, especially his father, who still remembers that is saying, don't do this. You know what I mean? You can, yeah. you can have a good life. You know, you're a Rudiger. There's nothing wrong with being a Rudiger. And Rudiger is his last name. I feel like out of nowhere, that would make no sense if you're listening to this. But yeah, 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 yeah. His father, I think, is extremely proud of him when he does make it onto the team, when he does make it to the school. You know, he's that first person who says, my son's going to Notre Dame to everybody he works with. Yeah. Um. And I think his father would, is very proud of all of his children who work in the plant or whatever, but I think that's obviously important. You know what yeah. I mean? That it's it's not that his father doesn't want him to try or doesn't want to succeed. It's that his father is afraid of him failing. What is your, I want to play football for Notre Dame? Oh, I don't know, Gabby. All my dreams have died long ago. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same. Um, this podcast, Gab. Yeah, there we go. I just feel, I don't know. I really feel like there is, I, there, I, I, and this is a me problem, but I, I have this allergy to getting something that I didn't deserve or that I didn't earn. And I understand, and I earn in the sense that in the same way everybody else earned it, because none of the other players on the team earned it because they showed up the most or gave a shit the most. They earned it because they were the best athletes. And so I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't want that. And I'd rather find some other way to be involved in a way that I am really good at. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe it's also just the movie doesn't do a good enough job of showing you just how many players are on that team. Because they talk about like the 15 walk-ons and it's like 90 different players. You know what I mean? Right. 60 of them get to dress or something like that. So there, there is a degree to which there is room for people who deserve it and are not the best athlete on the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about some of these guys taking off their jerseys and being like, I'm not playing if Rudy can't play. Because I got to be honest with you, I didn't believe that. Do you want the real version or you want me to talk about like the movie version? The real version. So the real version, there is, I believe, I think it's one player. It might've been two players who did go into the coach and say, I want Rudy to play in place of me. And these are guys who are not like in the movie. It's the captain of the team who is the first one who's an all American to lay down his Jersey and say, you know, for Rudy. And then every single player on the team is doing it. Yeah. Now, even the coach had said, he was like, that would never happen because none of those guys are ever playing again, if that's what they do. Yeah, mean. right. But exactly. in reality, if you're telling me the 58th, 59th best player on the team was like, let Rudy play in place of me. And I'm that coach. I'd be like, sure, our six string defensive lineman doesn't want to play and wants Rudy yeah, to play. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Fine. And I get that. But do you think that that would happen? It did do happen. You... Okay, fine. Yeah. Um. But do I think, every, like I said, do I think every player goes in, you know, and gives up their jersey and you have the moment where the coach goes, you're a captain of this team and an All-American, son, act like it. I yeah. believe I am. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no. you know, yeah. that's so obviously fictionalized. Yeah, yeah. But it's the team recognizing that he's done enough. Yeah. This, um, it all feels very topical for me as an athlete because... I just feel like, so, so let me, let me, let me explain myself. So Corey and I were invited to go up to HWPO headquarters tomorrow, actually, because they're doing a photo shoot for a new ad campaign, including like new merchandise and new programming and all this stuff. And so the Matt Frazier, his wife said- Former strongest man in the world, Matt Frazier? Fittest man in the world? Fittest man in the world. Yeah. Strong man is different. Um, his wife said to the social media manager who we've grown a relationship with, Gavin Corey need to come. We want them to model the shirts. So it's really fucking dope that they like out of there. They paid, they're paying. Oh no, they paid already. They paid to fly us to Vermont. They're putting us up in the HWPO like townhouse. We're going for this photo shoot. We're going to be in all the Instagram ads and, and in all the, the promotional stuff. And, and it's really, really cool. We'll be on the website. Um, it'll be like Matt, his wife, 
the coaches, me and Corey, like, it's really cool. But we got this opportunity because we are ambassadors of the the brand and the programming. And we are very much like, uh, we promote the team. We love them. We train every day. We talk about it on Instagram every day, but we're like, I'm not like, I, I, I have found my home in this team with this thing I do. I'm just a regular person who trains every day for HWPO with HWPO. I'm a firm believer, but I'm not like, I'm going to st- I'm going to show up every day until they put me in the games. Like I, I am aware that I'm not good enough for that, but I have found a home in this team in another way. Yeah. You're Does basically describing what happens in the movie. Like if you were telling me that you want to be, the face and the number one athlete and you want to be, you know, in the CrossFit games, like, yeah, that's not going to happen, but you're passionate for this team. You have worked hard. You love the team. You promote the brand. You're very into this. And so they recognize that and they have shown you some recognition. That's all that this is. I know, it's but the do they pity thing. me? Do they feel like I'm a loser and they need to do this? So I don't kill no, myself. They respect your effort. Uh, how do you not see the difference get your imposter syndrome out of here i feel less pathetic you know who you are in this movie (laughs) you're charles s dudden's character the janitor who's like (laughs) you listen to me you're five foot nothing a hundred and nothing and he goes uh oh my god wait i have written down he goes you got hardly a speck of athletic ability and you hung in with the best college football team in the land for two years. And you're also going to walk out of here with a degree from the University of Notre Dame. In this lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. And after what you've gone through, if you haven't done that by now, it ain't going to never happen. Is this still a good movie if he's just on the team the entire time in the practice and it ends with him at his graduation getting his degree and like taking a photo with his family. Yeah, but I I understand that it's it's not as inspirational and also yes. not what happened. Yes, like there is an irony to the fact that we're like this feels unrealistic, and it's like well, it's pretty close to what actually happened. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there yeah. is certainly embellishments, but it's pretty close. Yeah, I get it. Um, you know, it's another moment that's like so cheesy, but the movie has earned it for me by this point. I think they're about to run out into the field and the captain says to him, you ready champ? And Sean asked and God bless him says with all the sincerity that he can muster, I've been ready for this my whole life. And you're like, you're going to do it. <laughs> by that point, I'm so bought in. I feel like oh, you're boy. about to shit on this movie. When we get to the verdicts and well, I'm going to be well, devastated. Gab. So uh, there are a couple of things I want to talk about. Let's talk about Sean Astin because Corey kept being like, I liked him better in 50 first dates. And I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) and then I I didn't realize that he really is the brother from 50 first dates. Yes. With the lisp. The lisp and the mesh shirts and the steroids. Ironically, he's probably in like better physical shape in many first dates than he is in this movie. Not that he's out of shape. He's just like small. Yeah, yeah, no, he was he was buff in Fifty First Dates, but have you seen him lately? Oh, leave leave Sean Aston alone. He's aged. He's a normal human being. Leave him alone. But he, Fifty First Dates wasn't that long ago. Oh, Gab, it's like twenty years ago. No, that's wrong. No, <sighs> oh, I don't wanna, buy it. Do you want to do this? Yeah, I do. Gab, what year is it? Twenty twenty four. Fifty First Dates was two thousand four. Yeah. Damn it. That is devastating to me. Um, so I think it's reasonable that he has aged in 20 years. Yeah, but why? All right. I got in trouble last time, so I'm going to leave this alone. But I just think he looks particularly horrific. I think it's mean. I think he looks normal. Okay. We can't all be on the HWPO posters, Gav. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't think I have much else, like, opinion-wise that I'm like, I gotta get out of this movie. It is a movie that I do think you can cry watching this movie if you feel like it. I think that this is very inspirational. I think the real story is very inspirational. Um, we barely addressed a, a character like Charles S. Dudden's uh, Foster, who I think is really interesting, we didn't address John Favreau's character at all, but I think there, there's a lot about this movie that 
it all just works. And I feel like so much happens in the hour and 45 minutes of the movie. What's your favorite John Favreau era? Interesting. What do you mean? So there, there are so many of them, right? There's his early stuff, which what was the TV show he was on? His like first show? Oh, I don't know what TV he... show was. The first thing I think of him for is Swingers. Okay. Then maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Um, but then there's, remember when he was on Friends and he was Monica's boyfriend? Not a Friends fan. Really? Yeah, so sorry. Oh, and you don't, you don't, you can't picture this at all? I mean, I can picture it, certainly. Yeah, he was, he was Monica's like really rich boyfriend. Um, then there's Elf, right? Which he is in and directs, which I think is super impressive. Can and I make then, a bold statement? Yeah. I think Elf, very overrated. Um, I think it's been overdone, certainly. Yeah, not my favorite Christmas movie. I think it's okay. Yeah, I don't really like Christmas movies. I like some. It depends. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then, like, obviously, like we have Jean, uh, Jean, we have John Favreau to thank for um, in Frances, Jean Favreau, <laughs> Jean, Jean Favreau, um, to thank for um, uh, the little fucking Star Wars show, the the, the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian. He also directed Iron Man and Iron Man Two. Yeah, I don't care about that. But I do care about The Mandalorian. Well, he kicked off the MCU, which is the multi-billion dollar franchise. Yeah, I mean, he's amazing. Um, And you know what? He got handsomer as he got older. He definitely goes through eras of, he, he looks very different, I feel like, a lot of the time when you see him. I'm going to look up some, like, John Favreau through the years. I also really like him in the movie The Replacements, where he plays, like, the crazy linebacker. Um, I've never seen them. It's pretty good. It's it's maybe a movie I'll do on here someday, but probably not. Interesting facial hair choice in this picture, though. He's got like what, what is that? A Van Dyke? Oh, I don't know. But it was the it was the night. Speaking of which, did you see Dick Van Dyke won an Emmy? He did for what? He won a daytime Emmy for being a guest on like a soap opera. But he's ninety eight years old, and he got up on stage, and I'm like, God bless him. It's gonna be a dark day when Dick Van Dyke goes. I mean, I was referencing the same thing, Gap, but we don't need to say it. We don't need to say it. We just need to say he's doing great. Yeah, currently, but yeah, he's he's probably got a couple weeks left. You, there's only a couple weeks. This episode comes out in a couple weeks from when we recorded, Gap. I'm nervous now that we put like a, a oh timeline on did, this, man. Did we, did we predict and, and roughly cause the death of Dick Van Dyke? Um, I love him. You know what we should revisit? And not necessarily for the podcast, but just like quickly, uh, Mary Poppins with his horrific accent. We mentioned before, he's a very cockney accent. The chimney he, swipe. <laughs> I'm a chimney swipe. I and dance with the e fine ones. <laughs> Every day's a holiday with Mary. <laughs> <laughs> We've definitely, our opinions have gone off the tracks. Should we get to yeah. the facts? Yeah, please, please. Didn't even mean to rhyme right there. I want the truth! Face the facts, dokes. Facts have no place with an organized religion. On IMDb, it has a 7.5 out of 10. On the Rotten Tomatoes Tomato Meter, it has a 77%, with an average rating of 6.8 out of 10, and an audience score of 90%. Um, the critics' consensus? Though undeniably sentimental and predictable, Rudy succeeds with an uplifting spirit and determination. Couple reviews, Roger Ebert gave it three and a half stars. Eston's performance is so self-effacing, so focused and low-key, that we lose sight of the underdog formula and begin to focus on this dogged kid who won't quit. And the last big scene is an emotional powerhouse just the way it's supposed to be. Kenneth Turn from LA Times, underneath its rah-rah spirit, the PG-rated Rudy is straightforward enough to raise, albeit unintentionally, some troubling questions. Although we're supposed to be uh, nothing but charmed by how much it means to Rudy to play football for Notre Dame, his obsessed determination begins to look less inspirational and more like a kind of mental aberration the longer the movie goes on. And when it turns out that a dose of masochism is involved in the kind of physical punishment he ends up taking in pursuit of his grail, one wonders if Rudy in particular, and Druden fans in general, aren't suffering from a peculiar psychosis that is no less serious for being fabulously widespread. This is I, the movie to watch before you die. My name is Gavin. Thank you for I listening. I went and looked up that man's whole review to pull more from it because the original quote is just part of that. And I was like, I need the full context of this. Wow. Wow. 
Um, next up, Desmond Ryan from the Philadelphia Inquirer. A tedious and simplistic celebration of the virtues of determination, Rudy is a film that prostrates itself before the carefully cultivated and shrewdly marketed myths surrounding Notre Dame football. Yep. And last one, Stephen Holden from the New York Times. For all its patness, the movie also has a gritty realism that is not found in many higher priced versions of the same thing. And its happy ending is not the typical Hollywood leap into fantasy. Okay. Tell me you have letterbox. I do. Yes. Uh, Mike Flanagan said, I've seen this movie 20 times and I've smiled and cried harder each time I've seen it. Kyla said, I wanted Sean Astin to have the world in this movie. So inspiring, touching and uplifting. I got way too emotional watching this on a plane, which I did the same thing. I watched like the first half hour of this on a plane. and I was like, you can't cry on a plane, Dylan. <laughs> Yo, you guess you fucking can, and you deserve to after what you did to me with Homeward Bound. <laughs> also should be a mood art before you die, just saying. Nope, nope. Um, and the last one here, Kirk... Oh, no, I got two more. Kirk Kowalkowski, Fighting Irish. Notre Dame is in France, dummies. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. And CGS, CJS Films, men will literally devote their lives to college football before going to therapy. Thank you. Amen. The movie had a budget of $12 million. It grossed $23 million. It's directed by David Anspaugh, who also directed Hoosiers, The Game of Their Lives, and Wise Girls, which I have to read you the plot of Wise Girls. Please do. A new waitress working in an Italian restaurant in New York City finds herself entangled in a mob-run underworld of drug dealing and murder, starring Mariah Carey. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, that sounds like a gem. Yeah, also sounds like he took a left turn from his usual repertoire. Yeah. The screenplay is by Angelo Pizzo, who also wrote Hoosiers, Bleed for This, and My All-American. Uh, it stars Sean Astin as Rudy Rudiger, who you may know from The Goonies, The Lord of the Rings movies, and 51st States. John Favreau as D-Bob, who you may know as Happy Hogan in the MCU or from Swingers, um, but more likely you know him as a director by now, probably. Ned Beatty as Rudy's father, who you may know from Network, Deliverance, or Superman the Movie. And Charles S. Dudden as Fortune, who you may know from Alien 3, Gothic, and Legion. Oh, Gothica. I, it it autocorrected that, but I caught you. Mm -hmm. Good job. Um, do you want to hear the fun facts? So badly. Charles S. Dudden was convicted of manslaughter and served a seven-year sentence. While in prison, he assaulted a corrections officer and was sentenced to an additional seven and a half years in prison. While serving his sentence, he read a play that amused him so much, he started a theater group. To start the group, he had to be attending school, and he had dropped out in the seventh grade. He not only took classes to finish his elementary school education, but by the time he finished his sentence, he had a two-year college degree and then went on to attend Yale Drama School. Who is this? The guy who plays Fortune, who is a very successful actor, Charles S. Dutton. Wow. Um, in real life, Dan Devine, the coach of Notre Dame, was very supportive of Rudy and elected to put him in the game on his own. Um, because Devine considered Rudy to be a friend, he volunteered to play a villain in order to get the film greenlit. According to Rudy, there is no brother Frank in real life. The character of Frank is based on the people who told him he couldn't do it, all rolled into one person. Um, the game film that we see Coach Parsegian watching when Rudy walks in to ask if he could dress is actually the game in which Rudy played, the real game. This is the movie debut of Vince Vaughn, as we mentioned. Mm hmm the quarterback of that Notre Dame team, tell me if this person sounds familiar to you, Gab. Joe Montana? Of course. He was the quarterback of Notre Dame. He said Rudy being carried off the field in real life was a bit of a joke by the guys on the team. That I was like, the way to go. There you go. It's done. And I think Joe Montana is like, stop asking me about Rudy. Apparently, he was very supportive of the movie when it came out. But he's like, I've won four Super Bowls. Like, don't ask me about the guy who played one game. Talk to me about yeah. me. I've done enough. Like. I completely agree with him. And the reason Rudy had a spot in the game in her life was because his teammate was injured and taken off the roster for one game, Joe Montana. Um, when the game is being played, sitting behind Rudy's father and to the left is the real Rudy Rudiger. Interesting. Oh, I, I, hold on. I have something to say. Say it. His first name isn't Rudy. Rudy's a nickname. Yeah, it's Daniel Rudy Rudiger. That's so stupid. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Like, if, if I just knew this person, I'd be like, why do they call him Rudy? Like, what's the deal there? Yeah, and also he's like the last of the Rudigers. 
Yeah. Like that idea came to them after six other kids. They're like, oh my God, we should call him Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Kobe Bryant called Rudy one of his favorite movies and said, yeah, if I can work did. that hard every day, being blessed with the physical tools I have, what could my career be? Well, we found that out. Sorry. I can't tell if you're referencing his death, but he was a very successful football player. He, was, basketball he, was, he player. was, he was, he was, he was, that was a, that was in poor taste. <laughs> Jesus. Um, one other Notre Dame player has been carried off the field. Mark Edwards in 1995. Why? I don't know. You we'll have to watch the movie to, Mark. To research. <laughs> 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 okay, great. See you there. Rudy Rudiger, last one, has received honorary doctoral degrees from Holy Cross College, Mercy University, and Long Island University. No way! Yes. Um, he's been given key to the city at numerous cities across the nation, along with special proclamations for his inspiration, commitment, and human spirit. One such from the governor of Nevada, who announced an official Rudy Award Day. Um, the last thing that I didn't write down as a fact, but I remember there was a big issue that, like, he had some like tax issue at one point. Yes, I was gonna bring that up. Like I remember that being a thing, and I was like, "Oh, Rudy, no!" Like <laughs> I thought he was involved in a Ponzi scheme. No, I think he was involved in. Uh, there was some kind of money scheme, and he wasn't the one who like had the wrongdoing, but he was involved in some way. Like I think mm. he had to pay restitution for something. But well, he showed up at the IRS offices every day. <laughs> <laughs> and they just felt so fucking sorry for him that they just said fuck it don't worry about him he showed up every day and gave them one dollar and after a year they said just leave yeah. Honestly, <laughs> we know though, that you haven't paid enough like. but get out of here yeah just uh, listen we're making you for one day you are the fucking captain of the irs i don't know you don't have to pay anymore <laughs> oh, um that is all the facts that i got okay Gab, should we do some verdicts? Let's do it. Do or do not. There is no try. The guilty will be punished. Sentence to death. It's my movie. Obviously, I will go first. I think that Rudy is phenomenal. I think that if you can get past the cheesiness, if you can take it seriously, the movie takes itself so seriously that you have to enjoy and if not feel inspired, like, I don't think you're going to go out and be like, I'm going to go play for Notre Dame now. But like, you're going to feel better about not giving up. You know what I mean? Have I done all I can? Dreams is what makes life tolerable. You know, you're going to push yourself. And, oh, I didn't mention the music real quick. I'm going to mention real quick. The music is by Jerry Goldsmith, who also did the music for Alien, Chinatown, Planet of the Apes, and a lot of other stuff. He's wow. phenomenal, and the score to this movie is phenomenal. You'll have the music in your head for at least the next day. Um, and just remember, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. I don't know what the hell that has to do with this movie and why it's a tagline, but I love it. Well, because This movie is not... the most beautiful sight these eyes have ever seen. Okay. That's a quote from the movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shit well... on my games, Gab. Dylan, I'm going to tell you something. Take a Stephen I... Dump on my movie, Gab. <laughs> I see no, you no, wait no, for no. it. No, 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 no. You, you're mistaken. I was very inspired by this movie. I was very inspired to actually work hard and make something of myself so I don't have to rely on people feeling sorry for me to get what I want. Oh. Um, I've decided to pursue something that is feasible where I can shine so that I don't have to be known as the person that wore down the company so much that they finally got to spend one measly day pretending like it's Halloween that they achieved their goal. So it is inspiring. And I look forward to the day when I am actually, um, you know, living this thing that I'm pursuing and not uh, parading as if. So I didn't really love the movie. I really thought it was going to be far more inspiring. I remember being more inspired by it as a kid. I remember my dad freaking out about it all the time and using it as an example. But as an adult, uh, and, and maybe especially as an athlete, it just didn't really do it for me. Um, I didn't get the sense that he really worked all that hard. Academically, yes. Physically, no. Um, I got the sense that he didn't really deserve it. And they were basically just making him 
you know, trying to trying to let him live out his one fantasy so that his tiny little pathetic life wasn't wasted. Comes over um, like Charity Case the movie star Rudy Voodoo. <laughs> yeah, that's really how I felt. Buddy, it was shut like, up, nerd. <laughs> Get out of here. It's, it's like, you know, and, and as a Mets fan, I think you'll understand this, but it's like, I I, I guess if if the if Pete Alonso is gonna let some some kid who loves the Mets play first base, that's nice, but like as a fan, I really would like to see the Mets win. Like, we're really just going to get, I, I don't know. Anyway, now I wait. digress. No, wait, let me ask you something here. It is game 162. The Mets have no chance of making the playoffs, which <laughs> they didn't have a chance long before game 162, yeah. but I digress. Yeah. Pete Alonso is injured. It's going to be the backup first baseman. And instead of the backup first baseman, they put in the third string first baseman who has been on the team as like an extra player the entire season working his ass off. Are you going to say fire the manager because they didn't play the number two first baseman. They played the number three <laughs> first baseman. What no. kind of ridiculous no. cocky. I almost said cockney. What kind of ridiculous show they got <laughs> running on that day. <laughs> Isn't it? Um, no, 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 no. But he here's puts the a thing. penguin at first base. <laughs> <laughs> and it just is what it is. Here's the thing. As a viewer, first of all, game 162, when we don't have a shot at making it to the playoffs, I'm not watching, okay? <laughs> Let's make that no. clear. But even if I was, I don't think I would, I wouldn't know and I wouldn't give a shit. It would just be, I would think, oh, here's some AAA player, you know, because they do that, right? They they call up the, the minor league guys and they're like, all right, let's see what you got. Well, that's um, exactly what this is. They're up by like yeah. three touchdowns in the final game and they let him on for the last couple of plays because right, they're like, but- he's worked his ass off. But like that's that's what his entire life culminates to. That that's not what his life culminates to, though. But it is, it is about he had a dream, he pursued it, and he did the thing through sheer effort and willpower. What other dream? What other people have accomplished incredible? Th- How about Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan worked his ass off. Michael Jordan only has nine toes. Okay, is that true? <laughs> Yes, it's it is true. I read I, I read that in elementary school. I don't believe Google it, that. bitch. Michael Jordan did not make his high school basketball team. Yeah, okay. Michael Jordan didn't make his high school basketball team. They told Michael Jordan he was too small to play basketball, and guess what? He overcame nine. He's six foot six. He, so I he know. I'm fine. just saying. He just he wasn't good enough to play in high school, and he went on to be the best player of all time. Don't talk to me about Rudy, who wore them down so much because he showed up every day. Nice job. He's missing a part of his 10th toe. He's missing a toe. That Have throws you off of your Ronnie balance, Lott? Dylan. Do you know who Ronnie Lott is? Is he the baseball player that did only had one arm? No. Um. Oh, my God. That's like Jim Abbott, I think is his name. Yeah, Jim but Abbott. Yeah, Ronnie yeah. Lott was a football player who got his finger caught in somebody else's helmet during a game. And the finger was like severely like hanging by a thread. And he was like, just take it off so I can play the rest of the game. And I'm like, you fucking madman. Let's make a movie about that guy. I mean, I, I guess you could. Is that like the climax of the movie? Like, take this piggy? Like, Yeah, it's like 127 hours except football. Listen, all I'm saying is, to me, the message was, even if you didn't earn it, if you just, if you're just incessant, Maybe someday you can get it. Like if my dad, if my dad were like, I was the guy who showed up every day and finally one day they let me wear the jersey. I'd be like, oh, cool. (laughs) Right? Like, it's like. No, I think the message is if you set a goal for yourself and you never give up, you can achieve it. Because his goal is not like. You're making it sound like if he went out there and was like, I was the best player Notre Dame's ever seen. It's like, no, he's saying, I worked my ass off. And you know what? I was a part of that team. You know what I mean? Like, he's not going out there like, one career sack. How many career sacks for Notre Dame do you have, bro? Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It didn't do it for me. All right. That's all I can say. Sorry about it. Yeah. You know what? I was way more inspired by the King of Kong. Those motherfuckers did not give up. (laughs) Uh, I can't remember his last name. Steve from the King of Kong. Steve Weeb. That guy Steve, rules. Steve, Steve Weeb. Billy Mitchell, you suck. Yeah, Billy Mitchell. <laughs> fuck you. Go sell you at the bass. Go somewhere else, you son of a bitch. We love you, Stevie. You're the goat. <laughs> if you haven't seen the King of Kong, I think it's all, the whole thing's on YouTube. Watch it. It's great. Yeah. It's great. 
It's great. Dylan. So if you've been listening to this podcast, watch Rudy, watch Mary Poppins, and watch The King of Khan. And <laughs> yeah. don't watch Elf. <laughs> yeah, fuck Elf. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a couple episodes of Friends you could watch, too. They're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the In John Favreau's episode of Friends, his final episode, like his character arc, he does this thing and Monica thinks he's going to propose to her. And he like sets it all up and he's like, Monica, you know, you've been so supportive. I love you so much. And I'm really like ready to take the next step. And she's freaking out. And he's like, I just want to ask you a question. She's like, oh my God, oh my God. And he goes, will you, something about, uh, will you make me the happiest man in the world and support me as I train to become an MMA fighter? And she's like, oh, what? And then he disappears. We never see him again. Doesn't that make you think of 90 Day Fiance? I can't remember. It's, um, oh my Darcy God, yes. and Tom. Darcy and, Tom. and no, it's not Tom. It's the guy before Tom. It's, no. it's. Well, it's both of them, actually. They both do. Jesse <laughs> and Tom both have a moment where they like get down on one knee for Darcy, who is not subtle about being like, put a ring on it. Like, I want yeah. it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Jesse gives her a promise ring. And no, he gives clear. her no. Jesse gives her an appreciation <laughs> ring. Oof, that's <laughs> that's the Rudy I just talked too much. Like, here you go. That's that's the version of Rudy you're talking about. That's the charity ring. And Tom does something similar where he's like, "It means so much to me." Here you go, and he opens up a box for a key to his apartment. Yes, yes. And I'm like, oh, I don't think God. that's what she wanted, bro. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't remember how we got here. Oh, because of John Favreau. Yeah. Um, yeah. John All of Favreau? that to say, that's exactly how this movie made me feel. It was <laughs> like the movie got down on one knee and gave me an appreciation ring. Well, I think you need to show more appreciation. I think, Gab, you making it in hard work pays off. You going to Vermont. This is your Rudy moment, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I just feel like, no. You like described the exact same thing. You're like, yeah, I'm but not this the is not best, the peak. But I've shown them I'm a lot of done. effort. I'm not done. <laughs> Nobody said you had to be done. It's just that he had a timeline because he was a college athlete. Right, but that's why it's a lame premise. It's like, all right, listen, well, now what? What are you going to do with your life now? Your fucking girlfriend's fucking your brother. Like, you, He has made his entire life actually into being like, you know, he's a motivational speaker now, like, he, yeah. he he knew what he was doing because after this he worked as like a salesman at times, but he was like gonna pitch this movie. Like this worked out real well for real Rudy. He yeah, made it did. Happen. Yeah. 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 Props um, for the hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real. It's real. All right. Listen, I have to pee very badly. All right. Um, if you want to send us an email, send it to movies to watch for you die at gmail.com. If you want to send us a voice note, send it to anchor.fm slash movies to watch. There's a link tree below for the Hall of Pods podcasting network and our podcasting friends. There's a link tree below for us that has Gab's Venmo and a link oh, yeah. to her clothing brand, Strength Code Fitness. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, which I just listened to the last episode when I said Source Code Fitness. And I can't believe that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all the things, right? That's all the things. Um, we will have another movie next week um, or something, and I will choose it, but I haven't chosen it yet. So. Hang in well there. said, Gab. The plugs have been yeah. plugged. Come back for another movie. <laughs> Goodbye. The only one who ever took me serious, Pete. Well, you know what my dad always said. Having dreams is what makes life tolerable. <laughs>